see you. You're great. Good to see you, man. Uh, yeah. What are your emotions coming back to the Ferrell Center, coaching, coaching against uh, Coach Drew? Um, I really don't know. I mean, obviously, there's going to be emotion. You know, um, you know, it sucked the other night when they they lost. Uh, you know, I was rooting for them. Felt like we lost. You know, um, and so I mean, there's obviously a um, a very strong. Um, connection there and um, I'm gonna my prayers I can figure out how to separate the emotion and so that I can be the best version of myself for our team because that's what's the most important thing is the game and our players right and so that's that's really what I'm I'm trying to focus on but you know you can't ignore the elephant in the room and what are some of the things you maybe took from coach Drew that maybe helped you transition into becoming a head coach? Um, man, there's so much, John. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've um, texted and called coach several times just to tell him what a great job he does as a head coach. You know, like uh, when we were in the middle of it, I don't think I told him enough what a great job he was doing because we were always just trying to figure out how we could get a little bit better. You know, and, and in the midst of that, um, I don't think I did a good job of just letting him know, man, he was doing one heck of a job. And and the, the proof of that, the success that Paul and Grant and Matt and, you know, other people who have been under him have had. And now in my situation, because he prepared us, you know, he gave us, he, he taught us, he let, set a great example and of what servant leadership is and, um, you know, and and how to empower people to be the best version of themselves. And so, um, you know, I just, there's just so much that I've taken from. Thanks, Drew. Uh, next question to Alan. Hey coach, uh, thanks for doing this. Hope you're having a good week down in Texas. Um, after the Texas game, you talked about how much fun you had watching Cam Carter play against the Longhorns. Um, what do you think the biggest key was for him finding some consistency scoring on Tuesday night? Cam was one of those guys that uh, he doesn't feel the moment, you know, like it, no moment's too big for him. And uh, so he just plays, right? And I think that's what happened. First game against West Virginia, first Big 12 game, you know, maybe he overthought it, you know, and stuff instead of just being who he is, which is a hooper. And uh, in this game, I thought he just, you know, relaxed and hooped and, you know, that, that helped him. And then as far as consistency as a player, that's something that, you know, he's had some really big highs like against Texas and Kansas city, but then he's also had some games where he maybe didn't have as much success. How much of that do you think is maybe just related to going from playing less than 10 minutes a game to being a starter that's playing more than 25 minutes a game for you guys this year? No, it has a lot to do with it. Also, I mean, maturity, right? I mean, if Cam was consistently given given us 17 points a night, we'd be talking about him going to the draft, right? And uh, but you know he's he's inconsistent because uh, of experience, and the more experience he gets, the more consistent he'll become. And you know that's just uh, part of the process. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Uh, next question to Derek. Yeah, Coach, uh, the idea of dessert after a road win, is, is that something that you, you know, saw at a prior stop or did you kind of create that here in Manhattan? No, um, the very, our very first road win when I was at Baylor was against Purdue. And uh, I remember after we won, Coach Driscoll said dessert, right? And I didn't know what he was talking about. He's like, man, when you get a road win, you get to eat dessert. And so... I've always kept that and in my head. And so as Coach Driscoll, Coach Mills, Mac, other guys who've been on our staff, they've their programs, whenever they win a road game, I just text them dessert, the word dessert, right? Great road dub, dessert. And it's just something I and so when we won a Cal, there wasn't a dessert spot to go to. And I just told them, hey, we'll get it. And it took a, a while for us to deliver on the dessert. And everybody was giving me a hard time on it. And so I wanted to make sure that 
this one that we delivered right away. That's pretty cool. Uh, how uh, how much improved are you guys as a club right now since the Butler game? And is there a certain area where you've made the biggest stride in since that loss? Um, well, I think as a staff, the Butler game taught us a lot about how to like to do and not to do for us on road trips um, with our team. So that was a huge improvement and, and a great learning lesson for us. Um, as a team, I think the thing we've, you know, tried to improve on the most is um, cutting down turnovers. And I feel like like we've done a better job of that. And our, our conditioning level is at the point in our focus where we're, you know, given a consistent, like, you know, early on, I would talk about, man, we only played about 20 minutes the way we need. We're, we're playing about 30 to 35 now. And now we just have to be able to sustain that. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Uh, next question to Michael. When you get the win, is it easy to de-emphasize that number on the right at 103? Or do you guys uh, get after it in the gym on in emphasizing defense here the last few days? Well, um, we're always going to emphasize defense. But there are some nights, man, where, um, you know, these dudes, they spend all summer, they spend their whole life, you know, being in the gym shooting. They didn't go in the gym and do defensive slides, right? And, uh, um, I mean, Texas was scoring, and we had to keep scoring. And so, I mean, it was one of those games where both teams were playing at a high level offensively. And, you know, it's crazy to me is when um, the games are, you know, 55 to 50 or 60 to 55, you get the questions of, man, your offense sucks and what's going on and this and that and the other. How can you improve on your offense? Well, now we score 116 and it's like, man, your defense sucks. Well, no, the other team is good too. You know, like, I mean, did y'all, it's not like we're going to win 116 to 40 against the University of Texas at Texas, right? And so, um, you know, it was one of those games where both teams were scoring playing at a high level offensively and you just have to roll with it now are there some areas we can look back and say man we could have got a stop here and a stop there and yeah we're gonna we're gonna tweak those things but uh man like i told y'all i've told y'all several times i have a friend named tim malone and after every staff meeting right we would have at baylor when he was there talking about our defensive coverage and everything we we're gonna do he would stand up and say i hope we make shots and uh you know what on Saturday night against the Bears, I hope we make shots. What have you seen from Marquise Noel in his basketball IQ, say on a scale of one to 10? Uh, can you ask that again? I just heard the last part of it. Marquise Noel, as far as basketball IQ goes, on a scale of one to 10, where does he rank? I'm not good with scales. I just tell you this, that um, he's played for three different coaches in the last three years, I believe, and um, had to learn three different ways of playing the game and have to try and see the game through three different guys' eyes. And he's been able to do that. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm thankful that I, you know, Keith is a 22, 23-year-old, you know, man. And he loves the game of basketball. He, I mean, he devours it, right? Like he's constantly trying to learn. And that's what's allowing him to be able to play at a really high level and, and just embracing the way we want him to play. And I think a lot of the credit also, all the, the credit goes to Keys first, but some of the credit has to go to uh, Coach Perry and our offensive schemes because um, we're, we're putting Keys in spaces where he doesn't have to guess where to throw the pass. He just has to make the right read and and, he, and he's embracing that. Thanks, Coach. Got a call now. Yeah. Hey, Coach, I, I was just wondering, obviously, I'm sure you had a chance to watch the game. You referenced it with the Baylor and TCU game, but look at a kid like Keontae George. Uh, what kind of goes into stopping him and, and just how good are those guards for Baylor? Uh, the guards are very good for Baylor, as as good as a collection of guards as there are in the country. 
um, you don't stop a kid like Keontae George. You just hope to make the shots difficult, right? And, uh, you know, and then the percentages will, will, will play out. But it's never just one guy. Like, we, we've got to guard five against one and then be ready to rotate and guard five against one again. And then Naquan had those two fouls early in the game against Texas. Um, what does it say about your team that you were able to do what you did in that first half against Texas without, you know, one of your one of your front line front front line guys? Um, that we've got a, a group of guys that, that all care about winning and um, they understand next man up mentality. And I mean, we, we have some talent on our team. I, I mean, one of the things that we did as a staff, I feel it's like we brought in. Um, enough guys who could play in the Big 12, right? Who can help you win games in the Big 12. And, you know, Bebe goes down and David, you know, he steps up. David goes down and now Bebe has stepped up and Isha stepped up and Taiki has stepped up. And, you know, guys, uh, they're, they're, they're ready. You know, they're not sitting on the bench when they're not playing pouting. They're, they're caring about the team and about winning. And, and so it says a lot about the character of the guys. And then last one for me, Baylor started starts off 0-2 in the conference. I don't know the last time they did that. I'm sure it hasn't been very often. You would know. But just you feel like maybe there might be a little bit of desperation on that side. And, and how hard is it to play against a team that knows that this is a game that they really need to win? Uh, every game in the Big 12 is a game that everybody needs to win, right? And uh, I, I know that staff over there, they're not panicking. Um, they find solutions. You know, that's what they do. They don't, I mean, everybody can see problems. Uh, those guys get together and figure out solutions. And so, um, and this, this is not a, a must win for them to make or break their season. It's the next thing that they have to do. Just like for us, this is not a must win for us to make or break our season. You know, we, we're going to take every game, you know, 40 minutes at a time and um, going to wash it regardless of what happens. And so, um, you know, this this is this is not about them and anything like this. It's about Kansas State and us doing the best that we can do in, in those forty minutes. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck tomorrow. No problem. Thanks, Cole. Uh, and then we'll go to Vince. Hey, Coach Tang. I don't know if I've ever introduced myself yet. I work in Topeka. I'm the sports director over at WIBW. Thanks for your time. I guess to piggyback off of what Derek was talking about when that Butler loss, you know. Did you envision this team being what it is now? You guys that believe 13 and one. Did you see that, you know, when you came in, you recruited all these guys and some people have said, wow, Coach Tang has done a terrific job. Did you see this team being in this position where it's at right now when you first came here? That, that was the vision that we sold the guys to get them to come in. You know, as we showed them our non-conference schedule and we said, if you're a part of this roster, can we – beat this team? Can we beat that team? Can we, can we split with these two teams? Can we, you know, go two and one in the Caymans? Can, you know, I mean, so you give guys a vision of what you think you can do and can we win, you know, go eight and 10 or nine and nine in the big 12. And if we do that, then we can get to the NCAA tournament. So that was the vision we were selling all along. You know, I, I don't, didn't know how we was going to do it and exactly what it was going to look like because it all depended on who, was going to join and be a part of it. And, but I love the group that we have right now. And they've really bought in to, to caring about winning and doing whatever it takes to win. And, and which, whichever guy is night it is, they're going to let him be that night. And I think the, one of the things I'm really, really proud of is early in the year, you know, Cam Carter would hit two threes, you know, in the first half and not get another shot in the second half. Right. And, uh, and I, I, I would tell y'all I have to do a better job as a staff, but really the, the the team, when a guy gets hot, you should get him the ball, right? Like that's what good players do for each other, guys that care about each other. And I think we saw growth, you know, the other night, Cam hits a couple and they're still trying to get him more shots, you know? Um, you know, Keese is going, they're trying to get Keese shots, you know? So you, you love seeing that growth when they're recognizing what we have and what's working and it's not coming from the staff. Thanks so much, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Vince. Okay, we'll go to Callis next. Hey, Jerome, I hopped on a minute late, so if this was asked already, just tell me. But uh, when you're coming off in a performance when you score 116 
how as a team do you reset and, you know, realize that maybe that's not realistic every single night and refocus on Baylor. And, you know, even if we don't score a hundred, we can still win the game. Yeah. We didn't even talk about it. Um, you know, our, our thing is the next we celebrated that night, let them enjoy it. Next day it was about, you know, going one and oh, you know, rehabbing, doing what we need to do. And um, now we're just going to go play. And um, the, the the pace of the game and the style of the game determines what, what happens, you know. Um, but we, we didn't go in thinking we was going to score 100 points and, uh, you know, definitely not thinking about that this next game. We just want to have one more point than the other team. And uh, at least externally, it seems like that game of Texas maybe raised some people's expectations or at least, you know, opened some eyes about you guys. Did uh, Watching that, did you have any moment yourself where you thought, boy, maybe these guys are a little bit better than I thought? Um, no, not, not really. Like, our, our goals haven't changed from the beginning of the year, you know, and um, we have certain things that we want to accomplish and, and we're going along the road. I, I, we don't know how, like, I can't, like, tell you, hey, we said we were going to do this and went on the road. We didn't know we were going to play three ranked teams to start the Big 12, right? I mean, you just you just never know. The, the key was that, hey, we got to keep getting better and, you know, win a certain number of games that gives us a chance to get to the NCAA tournament. And, you know, that so our goals didn't change at all. Now, um, when you – I haven't even watched the, the Texas game, okay? I, we put it to – I set it aside and been focused on Baylor. And, uh, but, you know, um, you obviously think, man, you know, we're, we're, we're really making strides, you know, like the hard work in the summertime with the shooting, like you know, we, we're probably not going to shoot like that every night, but, you know, now all of a sudden teams have to guard us a little bit differently, you know, and so it's going to open up some different opportunities for some different guys. All right, great. Thanks, Jerome. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, Kellis. Uh, I'll go back to Michael. Yeah, Coach, any update on David Gasson's uh, condition right now? Still day-to-day, -day, my man. He's, he's working through it. All right. Thank you. Coach, that looks like all the questions we have. I appreciate your time. All right. Thanks a lot. Go Cats.